In this video, we're going to take a quick look at an example of how data replication works for continuous availability. Now I'm going to use queue replication in this example. Uh, I feel it's got a number of features that make it especially good for availability. And we'll talk about those real quick here. Uh, first of all, it allows read and writes at all sites involved in replication. And naturally that opens up the possibility of conflicts, so queue replication has built-in options for conflict detection and resolution. Uh, next, queue replication allows a fast switchover from one site to another uh, for either planned or unplanned outages. Uh, you also have considerable flexibility in how you set things up. For example, you don't need to have the same hardware, the same operating system, or the same database and application levels at all sites involved in replication. Uh, this is especially helpful for a bunch of reasons, not the least of which is that it lets you keep costs down at a secondary site. And naturally, replication solutions don't have the distance li limitations typically associated with hardware solutions. Now, let's get back to our example. Uh, we're going to look at an availability scenario between two sites. Uh, we have two approaches we could take, either a primary site with a standby or two sites that are both being used for update activity. Uh, some people call the latter one active-active, but both of these are really active-active scenarios. Uh, I'm going to use the first in this example because I feel it's simpler and because it illustrates most major points for both solutions or both approaches. So this is our working scenario. We've assigned updating apps to a primary site and read-only apps such as reporting or analytics to a standby. However, if we wanted to, we could have easily split the read-only apps across sites and that would have provided us with some additional workload balancing. Now we also have replications log capture and applied programs running at both sites. But of course as you can see, data is only replicating one way right now and that's from primary to standby. That's simply because all of our updating apps are on the primary. Uh, one other point here is that we've set up a failover connection for automatic switch over or updating apps from primary to standby. And in this case, uh, I'm showing DB2's client reroute. So what happens if we have an unexpected outage of that primary? First thing is that apps will switch automatically to the secondary site. However, you may prefer to control the switchover if you think conflicts are possible. And digressing just a second here, I'm not going to go into the details of conflicts and their resolution in this video. However, I will give a quick definition to make sure we're all in sync. Specifically, a conflict is a condition where target data isn't the way replication expects it to be. And that's usually because an app is changing the same tables as replication. Now you can avoid conflicts at this time by letting replication finish processing any queued data before you let updating apps start up over on the standby. And then I guess the last point here is that replication will begin queuing change data for return of the primary the minute updating apps hit the standby system. So that brings us to the question, what happens when the pri primary returns? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to leave updating apps where they are, <laughs> at least for the time being. We have a few things we need to do before they can switch back over to the primary. Uh, the first of those is we need to start the capture program on the primary and let it capture any change data that was stranded on the primary when it went down. Uh, this gives us a chance to see if any conflicts exist. Specifically, it's possible that older changes on the primary don't fit well with newer changes on the standby. Now there's two key things to know if a conflict is found at this point in time. First, whenever replication detects a conflict, the SQL for the conflict is logged in a table. This means we can easily generate a report to see if any major issues exist. Second, and this is really important to understand, we've chosen an option that tells replication not to apply the conflicted data to the standby's tables. Why is that? Uh, it's because we assume the standby's data is newer and should take priority because it's newer. That's typically the best approach with a primary standby configuration. Now once the stranded data is replicated, we're ready to send the standby's data to the primary. We can now start the apply program back on the primary and see the standby's data flow to it. Naturally, if you previously saw a conflict on the standby with the primary's older data, you will likely see a conflict as the standby's newer data moves to the primary. 
However, in this direction, we've chosen an option to have the standbys data applied to the primary, overriding the primary's older data. Again, the SQL is logged for your review. And now you can choose to move apps back anytime, but you may want to let the Apply program get through the standbys backlog before you do. So now, once our apps have switched back to the primary, everything looks the same as our original picture. Uh, about the only thing to say here is that if you're wondering whether replication can handle a large volume of data for availability scenarios, see the Q Replication Scalability video in Channel DB2. The information there applies to all replication scenarios, including availability. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section of the page where this video is posted. Uh, otherwise, thanks.